Hey guys, so today you and I are going to talk about gaining seniority without joining a software team. So let's get into it. So the question in question was, Frederick, some of us work in countries where the IT boom hasn't really happened and it's hard for us to work as anything besides freelancers. How can people like us gain seniority? And the short answer is in very similar ways to how people inside of an IT company gain seniority, but you don't have any peers. Let me explain. So something that I think is really important here to understand before we go into the actual nitty gritty details is that seniority guys is just a word. Seniority just means that you have experience from a given industry. It means that you have done something for long enough that you now you kind of know how all of this works. And you see what's interesting about that is that if you're a senior in an IT company as part of a development team, that does not make you a senior freelancer. You see the skill, the survival skills required for a freelancer is different in many ways from those of someone who works in a product company, such as at Google or Facebook or most of the IT companies are in some fashion, a, unless it's a consultancy, of course, a product company. So the, they have different survival skills. And this is something I've touched on a few times as well, where you, depending on your role and depending on the level of development that you're going to do, it's, uh, it's similar to a data scientist or a computer scientist versus a programmer. Both are using code, but there's so much more that you can think of it as two spheres that intersect at one piece, which is usually the coding area. And for a freelancer and someone working in a product company, it's a very similar sort of thing. Both are going to use code, both have stakeholders, etc., etc. But a freelancer needs to think about marketing and think about their brand and things like that, and much more than a product company developer needs to th think about that stuff. Controversially, or like on the flip side, a product company developer needs to very often have a much more long-term thinking within their development process. In other words, things such as test-driven development and really taking your time and making things well and so forth might be a much bigger thing in the product company, de product company developer's life than it is for the freelancer, depending on the, on the project, because the freelancer may or may not have much sharper deadlines and be in a legal situation if they don't meet that deadline and so forth. So cutting corners might be a necessary evil for the freelancer in a broader sense than for the product uh, developer. This is not always true, of course, but I hope we can agree on that the considerations for these two types of people is going to sometimes be the same, but and very often also be very different. And so in order for you to gain seniority, you're gonna to have to do the same thing as the product company developers do. And pretty much every developer has two ways that they can improve their seniority. One is of course, learning by doing and actually doing work. That's gonna help you because the more you succeed and fuck up, a lot more fuck ups than successes if you ask me, but you're gonna go through this process until you churn out more and more uh, high quality work. And that is how you gain seniority the best way. But the other way is, of course, that you learn from other people. And if you are in a product company, learning from other people can come in usually two ways. And it's either from your coworkers or it's from going out and listening to tech talks, newsletters, the, you know, the normal news channels that we programmers have for sharing within our community. And this is a very thriving community when it comes to learning experiences and people sharing their stuff. There's tons of stuff, right? Now, this is no different for the freelancer. The freelancer is also going to go through this process with the one, one exception, and that is that you don't have any peers. And that is, of course, an issue because if you have peers, then your feedback cycle is going to be faster, definitely. But I want you to understand that as well. That doesn't mean that you're not going to gain seniority. You're just going to gain seniority with a different set of skills. Now, those skills may not be 
directly translatable into the same sort of skills that someone working in a product company is going to need. But I want, to under, want you to understand that it's the reverse as well. Just because you are a product company developer, there's tons of developers who tried to make it on their own from the industry and didn't cut it as a freelancer. Because as a freelancer, you need more. You are a one person company. You need to be able to absolutely write the code and do all the stuff that the product company developers need. But you also need to be able to run a business. And there's tons of people who have no idea how to do that. They don't have the structure. They haven't put in the work. And that's something that you have that they don't. If you can make it as a freelancer by yourself, sure, you may miss out on the social skills and understanding how, quote unquote, the real IT industry works and how to deal with sprints and all these other soft skills and management type of things. Sure, you might miss out on that. But at the very least, you know how to run a successful company because otherwise you wouldn't survive. And that is in of itself a skill set that will, will gain you seniority. You will gain seniority in this area. And what's interesting about that is that the thing that you have in common, the coding thing, that's pretty much the same. There's really no difference. As I said, the only difference is that you don't have co-workers in the same fashion. And you can bridge a lot of that by taking part in of course, community sort of things, open source and so forth, and deal with people so that you get more feedback on your code. Because that's one of the things that is a risk as a freelancer, that you may be learning a lot of stuff, but when it comes to good practices around coding and so forth, you can often be more in the dark because you don't get as much feedback as someone who has someone who is working with them. If you're part of a team, you get a lot more feedback on the work that you do and you refine your process quicker. That doesn't mean that you don't refine it as a freelancer, it's just going to take a little bit longer. So what I want you to take away from this is that you will gain seniority as a freelancer and the best way for you to gain it is simply by working as a freelancer and then ideally talking to other freelancers. This is the important part of my little rant here. It is important for you to understand that your situation is different from that of a product company developer. You have things that overlap and the best skill that you can acquire, and this is just not, this is not just true for freelancers, it's true for everybody, is to have the ability to look at what someone who's suggesting a new way of doing something or a better way of doing something, to look at what they're suggesting, to understand their situation, who are they, who are they working for, what scale are they working for, uh, working at, and their solution, which problem is the solution solving? Answer all these questions and then look at yourself and go, this is exactly the problem that I am having. Then you can adopt that thing. But if it's just something that, say, is useful for Google, then why the hell would you care about it unless you are Google or some super company? There are so many people who don't get this. And as a freelancer, I think this is even more important because there are so many practices out there that are right for a product company or a giant corporation or something like that. But as a freelancer, you should focus on adopting the things that will make sense for your work situation. And if you are a one person company, a lot of these ideas around high availability with Kubernetes and microservices and all that stuff, it's kind of pointless. Sometimes it might be useful, but for a lot of the time, it's not going to be useful. It's much more important for you to be able to ship really quickly, make sure that it works, etc., etc. There are tons of things that you should consider. And in order for you to, to gain seniority, you need to figure out what parts to listen to when you talk to the other developers in different communities and what parts you should just figure out on your own. It's what I I like to call it that you listen to what they say and then you look at their solution and you try to understand the problem they're solving and then you see, then you pick the parts that make sense for you. Don't just copy paste what everybody is saying, think it through, pick the thing that actually makes sense. And sometimes you're going to be the one who comes up with a new idea of some sort. And then try to have a conversation as much as possible with people in a similar way life situation to you. There is no reason for you to blindly follow test-driven development practices for someone who works at NASA or Google because they are working under different circumstances than what you are. You need to figure out, is that practice going to help you or is it just something that might make sense if you were in a different life situation? Have a great day.